this is my son, loved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus My sisters and brothers in Christ, during the course of our lives, we experience people and events that help shape who we are, how we think, how we believe and act. And sometimes these people and events are good for us, and sometimes maybe not so good. I'd like you to think back. Can you remember anything that happened in your life that helped change you. Maybe it made you more faithful, compassionate, maybe more forgiving. It could even have made you more resentful. But the point that I'm getting at today is that events happen in our lives that change us. In today's readings, Jesus is atop Mount Tabor and is transfigured right in front of Peter, James, and John several things happened. Jesus changes right in front of their eyes from a physical presence to a glowing, spiritual, divinely state. Then Jesus is heralded by his Father, achieving dominion, glory, and kingship. And as we hear God the Father expressing for a second time, because the first time was during Jesus' baptism, he says, this is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. The disciples, yes, were amazed as they gazed upon Jesus. And when he heard the Father speak, they became fearful and they laid prostrate on the ground. They closed their eyes, just as sometimes when we become fearful, as they hid their eyes, we sometimes close our eyes to the things around us. And then our Father adds saying, listen to him. His message is not just for the disciples of Peter and James and John of that time. God is also speaking to you and to me, his present day disciples because we too are to listen to Jesus. 
And then something beautiful happened to the disciples. As they were covering their eyes in fear, Jesus touched them and said, be not afraid. And as they looked up, all the fear drained from them and was replaced by an indescribable love, a divine love. Can you imagine the peace, the love that they felt as they looked up at Jesus? Do you think this had an effect on Peter, James, and John? Sure it did. They saw and they heard God just as, to, as today's readings described. And it validated to them that Jesus is God's son. And after experiencing this moment of glory, as Jesus was transfigured before them, they came down the mountain to return to their eventful lives filled with joys and challenges. But this time, they were equipped with the knowledge of knowing who Jesus is and now putting their faith in him. Jesus was transfigured. Peter, James, and John was transformed. And that is why God said, listen to him. Because until we accept Jesus in our lives and turn everything over to him, we will not have true peace. Have you experienced in your life a transformation? Maybe not on the scale of the disciples that we heard about today, but we do have opportunities for God's love to touch us, to change us into believers of God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, transforming our lives from just rolling along to cruising down the highway to heaven. And from the time of our baptisms until we ourselves are transfigured into God's eternal love, we do enjoy the opportunities in life to experience some of the best and we even have to experience some of the worst happenings. But it is in listening to Jesus in these best moments that give us gratitude, thankfulness, and faith. And it is in the worst moments that when listening to Jesus, we receive wisdom, patience, compassion, and hope to move through them. We may think that since we go to mass and basically are good Catholics with only a venial sin here or there, that we're good to go. But when something truly dramatic happens in our lives, are you just good to go? To get through tough times in your life, you have to turn it over to Jesus. And you may think that through all that you've been through that you're transformed. But have you truly surrendered yourself to Jesus and placed your trust in him, in everything in your lives? I believe there is a time in most people's lives that we do surrender ourselves over to Jesus. That time could be due to some event or some occurrence that happens to us or on our deathbeds when we finally surrender. Either way, it's the only way to true peace. I'd like to share my story with you. Many of you know that I was born to a Catholic mom and a Protestant dad and of course we know I'm standing here today so my mom won out, right? <laughs> I was an altar server and as a teenager I did think about becoming a priest. But that thought did not last when I met my wife Trish. So, but the next 43 years were full of ups and downs. And they still continue today. The ups are easy, so I'll share with you some of the uh, tough stuff. Raising teenagers. How many of you, yeah, there you go, I got some of you. All right, concerns with jobs and movements, and these things all were part of my life too. I mean, that's why I wrote them here. Military activations, the normal stuff of dealing with your house, your cars, and children growing into adults. But mostly, the loss of loved ones. I see these as sometimes barriers preventing us from truly hearing Jesus. And it's easy to get caught up in the minutiae and forget to call upon him. 
and going to Mass every Sunday and being a good Catholic, most of the time will only help you muddle through these trials. I don't think you will find true peace until you place your trust, your issues, and your life over to Jesus. We hear in Matthew chapter 11, verse 30, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. This is when you will find true peace. I experienced my transformation the moment I surrendered my life to Jesus on the day that I became a deacon. And it wasn't until that day that I truly turned everything in my life over to him. And now, I trust that whatever happens to me, he will be there with me. I still have fears and worries and anxieties like everyone else. None of that ever goes away. And it's, a, it's daily that I have to remind myself to turn it over to Jesus so I don't get caught up in the minutia of things that I have no control over. So I accept them and I deal with them the best that I can. Have you experienced a time or met a person that has helped transform your life? Have you surrendered and turned everything over to Jesus and accepted everything that came along as just another challenge? Or like I say, a test? Because every day is a test. We all know that. You, know? you don't have to be ordained to surrender yourself over to Jesus. You just turn it over and trust that he will walk with you and guide you and maybe even send an angel in the form of another person to help you through it all. Cardinal Dolan of New York always says on his radio show that God always comes to us through other people. My sisters and brothers, know that you will see Jesus as he was transfigured that day in front of Peter, James, and John. And until then, enjoy the good times of your lives to the very fullest. And when things don't go so well, accept them and pray to Jesus. And when he answers, listen to him. May God bless us all.